Intermittent fasting versus time-restricted eating. What's the difference? Well, let me start by saying this. Do you see a difference between these two dogs? All right, they're very similar, but they're also very different. That's pretty much the same way that intermittent fasting versus time-restrictive eating is. So let's get down to the science. So that is just that, time-restricted eating versus intermittent fasting. Very, very similar, but also a little bit different. And most of it has to come down to who is really pioneering these diets and who's behind them a lot more, because we just have a difference in vernacular and a difference in verbiage, and really a difference in what is being focused on with the given diets. And let me first off start by saying that neither one is bad. I'm not here to bash time-restricted eating and I'm not here to bash intermittent fasting. In fact, I am a proponent of both, but I think it's important that you understand the difference. Now, when we look at time-restricted eating, most of the time we're focused on when we're eating versus what, which is also important for intermittent fasting, but time-restricted eating focuses more on being able to eat whatever you want and not paying attention to the hormonal effects of the actual fasting window. The simplest explanation that I can give you above all else of this is that intermittent fasting focuses on the benefits of fasting, whereas time-restricted eating is focusing on the benefits of eating within a certain window. So it's just different emphasis on different times of the fasting period, when in reality, time-restricted eating is still a form of fasting, it's just with varied amounts of time that are your eating windows or your fasting windows. So time-restricted eating doesn't really give you any kind of protocol or any kind of stipulations that you need to be paying attention to when it comes down to here's how long you should fast for and here's how long you should be eating for, which leads a lot of us to believe that there's a lot less science that is gearing towards time-restricted eating. Well, I've taken the liberty of looking into some studies when it comes down to time-restricted eating to prove that it is still good, but intermittent fasting is likely better. Okay, so the Salk Institute did a study on mice, and this was really interesting. They did a long study, 100 days, and they gave these mice fatty foods. They broke them into two groups, of course. One group had half their food at night and then nibbled on food the rest of the day, okay? So they were given like a 60% fatty diet, so most of their food was coming from fat. We're talking things like potato chips, stuff like that. Okay, the other half was restricted to an eight hour feeding window. So they were fasting for 16 hours, which looks a lot like the 16-8 intermittent fasting window, right? But again, the focus being on the fact that they were eating kind of whatever they want, not really paying attention to the food that's going in their body like I like to do with intermittent fasting. Well, what they found was that the time-restrictive eating group ended up having 28% more weight loss than the other group. That's a pretty significant amount. In fact, the other group, the control group, didn't have any weight loss. In fact, they gained weight more than anything and they ended up having elevated biomarkers like elevated triglycerides, elevated serum cholesterol levels, and elevated liver enzymes, showing that it really wasn't good, even though they were consuming the same amount of calories. Now, the interesting thing is, this could simply be applied over to intermittent fasting as well, because it is describing almost the same thing, which is somewhat my case in point, that even though we hear lots of things talking about time-restricted eating versus intermittent fasting, a lot of times they are one and the same, it's just what we're focusing on. Now, Intermittent fasting is focused on the benefits of the fasting window. So we're focused on what hormonal changes are occurring while you're fasting, what autophagy effects are occurring while you're fasting, what kind of neural healing effects, what kind of inflammatory or anti-inflammatory effects, all the benefits of the fasting period, where these guys are focused a little bit more on flexible dieting and just saying, hey, you can eat whatever you want as long as it's within this window. Science, a little less science. Again, flexible dieting and not long-term, focused on the eating window. The only thing that I have a serious beef with when it comes down to time-restricted eating is the fact that they're encouraging restricted calories in a lot of ways. Even though they're talking about flexible dieting a lot of times, they say the benefits from fasting and the benefits from time-restricted eating are coming from the fact that you are eating less calories during your eating window. Because generally speaking, when you are fasting, you are going to have less time to be able to eat, so you ultimately consume less calories. They find that the focus comes from that. The benefits come from restricting your calories and eating less. Well, the Journal of Nature actually published a pretty darn big study that found that by cutting calories by 30%, it did not increase your longevity, and it did lower triglycerides, but it didn't have an overall big impact on the health of somebody. Whereas with fasting, when we look at the actual fasting period, we look at the longevity benefits of doing extended fasts or doing long-term fasts. Big, big differences there. Cutting calories can be detrimental for our metabolism, whereas intermittent fasting focuses on higher calories, or at least maintenance calories, but just focused in a set window of time. So therefore, the focus is more on what's happening with the hormones, and the focus is more on using fasting as a catalyst to get more out of your eating window. 
focusing on what you're eating in your window, focusing on fasting as the catalyst that is going to enhance and exacerbate the positive effects of what you're eating. Focusing on health, focusing on short term. That's the biggest beef there. So the other big thing we have to look at is intermittent fasting, just like the name implies, should be done intermittently. Okay, done intermittently meaning we're focusing again as a tool versus restriction. We're throwing intermittent fasting into the mix to get a nice metabolic effect, to get that autophagy that we want, to get that stimulus that we need, that growth hormone surge, that testosterone surge, that luteinizing hormone surge. This is powerful, whereas daily fasting is not ideal. I don't recommend that because it results in calorie restriction, which comes down to restricting your metabolism. There have been studies that have shown that you end up having a 23% decrease in your metabolism by chronically reducing your calories. So intermittent fasting every day would slow down your metabolism. It's not about eating every two hours, it's just about the fact of shrinking down the calories that you're consuming. That's gonna slow down your metabolism over time. Use this intermittently and keep your calories moderately high when you eat with intermittent fasting. The big one that I wanna talk about too is hormones again. Intermittent fasting's big focus, one of the biggest things we wanna focus on with intermittent fasting is the positive effects on hormones. Again, 2,000% increase in growth hormone, 180% increase in bioavailable free testosterone levels, and a 67% increase in luteinizing hormone as credited by the European Journal of Endocrinology. So we're focusing on using those hormones through the fasting windows to capitalize on the food that we do consume. Again, focusing on insulin, all hormone-related science, a little less hormone-related. In fact, time-restricted eating and actually reducing your calories by only eating during a set period of time can have a detrimental effect on your testosterone and your estrogen levels, sending both of them into the floor. So even though we get the benefits of fasting with time-restricted eating, since we're reducing calories so much, we have negative implications. And again, since there's no specified protocol with time-restricted eating, there's nothing to really prove. Because on one hand, they'll say you can fast for 10 or 12 hours. On the other hand, they say you can also fast for 16, 18, 20, or 24. There's no real set parameters, whereas intermittent fasting is a little bit more strict and says, hey, we're focusing on fasting. So this hopefully clears some stuff up. It's still a big hodgepodge and it's still a bit messy because again, it's all vernacular. It's all just how we refer to different things and how different people refer to what they do in the way of diets. I'm a huge fan of having a protocol and keeping things strict because I am science related and that's exactly what I wanna do. I want the data, I want the protocol, I wanna know what works, I don't want ambiguity. That's why I stand here versus here, but that doesn't mean that what you're doing is necessarily wrong. I just think you should have science on your side. And as always, keep it locked in here in my videos if you want more videos like this, especially in this whiteboard style where I can break it down because I'm kinda of digging this and I hope you are too. Keep it locked in here on my channel, see you soon.